these videos are becoming more and more common. So this is a yet another update video. I'm going to go over you know a bunch of stuff that I've recently gotten, and I'm going to start off with this Tyr Tyrannus um, kind of like cover skin. This comes from Underground FPV, and this is a, a very special designer that they that they kind of license the designs that they that he produces from. This is a, a white Tyrannus QX7 case that they have hydro dipped in this very awesome design. I recently, or this morning, early this morning, I switched over the, the my whole Tyrannus. I still have the green back because I have my custom battery mod in there, which I was just too lazy to put on the white one just yet. Um, it was a pretty easy uh, changeover. If you're going to pick up this case, I would say you know you got to shave out the um, power button a little bit because the hydro dip kind of got into the power button, and if you don't shave it out, it'll bind up. It's, it looks great. It looks fantastic. You also will need to unsolder your antenna and solder it back onto the board. And it's an absolute, absolute pain in the ass to get this antenna out of the antenna holder. Okay, that's that. Let's now look at... This is a new camera from Foxeer, which is a, it's a CMOS. It's their micro... I think they're calling it Predator, some, some weird name. I can't really tell you if it's good or bad. I know the lens that they sent me on it was pretty bad. And so I put the um, standard lens from the micro arrow on here, and it's perfect. But this camera doesn't have an OSD, so I can't change the uh, backlight settings or the HDR settings, so I can't really comment on it. It's a CMOS sensor. It's 700 TV line, supposedly. It definitely does look higher resolution than my CCD cameras, the micro CCD cameras, so look for that. Next thing, this is the new micro Foxier micro camera, which looks completely identical to the previous one. I have no idea what they changed. I have a feeling that they just added some OSD features, which gives you like the ability to switch from um, night mode to LED mode to day mode. Uh, probably that's all. I asked them to conformal coat all of their boards. They have not conformal coated these boards yet. I'm really urging them to do that because I don't know why these these board manufacturers don't just coat everything they send us. It's not, it's not like it costs them much to do. That's that. And now let's look at this new motor. This is the BBB 2207 2650 kV motor. And the reason I'm showing you this motor is, well, I'll show you in a while. In a second, I'll tell you in a second. But this is the box that comes in. Beautiful box. It's the most beautiful motor box I have ever seen. This is a $15 motor, or at least it's on sale for $15. I'm not sure. The screws it comes with are 12.9 hardness. They are like two millimeters too long, even for four millimeter carbon. It comes with two prop nuts, which is nice. And honestly, we don't really need this box. So I would, I, I mean, I would, I would kind of, I would probably think that they're spending too much money on the box, and I'd rather them spend more money on the motor and it come in a little white box or a little bag, because I don't think anybody really cares. You're just going to throw away the box. All right, so let's look at the motor and let's compare it to the other budget and whatnot motors that I have. The motor is made by 3B. I've known this company for a while now. The designer of, of the motors for this company are is the same person that designed the original red bottom motor, the um, Emacs red bottom motor that was super duper popular. And so he definitely knows how to design a motor. Now, uh, I've been talking to uh, the 3B company for a long time now and trying to kind of tell them what kind of features people look for in motors and they've kind of sort of listened a little bit as you can see here first and foremost it's got multi-stranded wiring which it's hard to say whether that makes a difference positive or negative it has much thicker magnets than typical other motors i don't know if i could show you another one that's got thinner magnets well both of these have thick magnets kind of hard to show so the zmx has this little lip at the edge which doesn't show you how thick the magnet is but the magnets on the 3b motor are a little bit thicker like a tenth or two tenth of a millimeter thicker and as you can see it does not have that lip that holds the magnets on so if they have glue problems it will the, the magnets will slip what's really nice is that it has a little skirt down here which if you screw your screws in too far you're not going to run into your windings and kill all your windings because it's got this little plastic skirt which is super nice the base of the motor is super thick it feels like it's like a 16.5 by 16.5 mounting pattern it's got a little bit of wiggle room inside the mounting pattern so it's a little bit bigger the motor is a 2207 motor it it weighs um 34 grams with all the wire which is one gram less than the aok fly 2306 and another thing that these companies are doing, which I don't understand why, is they're putting an aluminum shaft with the shaft in the middle, like a steel whatever or whatnot shaft in the middle, and they're saying that that's stronger. And I, I don't know about you, but I have personally stripped a number of 
aluminum shafts, no matter what what kind of alloy they're made of, a 6061, 775, I mean, they all strip eventually over time. So I don't know why they have decided to do this. We all we all like to have this one solid titanium shaft all the way through the motor. And that that is preferred. So to all motor manufacturers, do that. Don't do this. Just just don't do this. I don't I don't know why we're going backwards. The AOK twenty three oh six and the BBB twenty two oh seven perform pretty much identical. I cannot feel a difference between these two motors in the air. Um, if you have a quad that has the battery directly in the middle like a Chameleon or the Hyperlow or just any other quad that has just stuff in the middle and doesn't have kind of like air, room for air to flow around, you're going to want to go with a 2306 motor because it does feel like it has more torque. And the problem with having the center of the quad just blocked is that you get like a, a dull sensation when you give it stick inputs because the air can't flow through the through the body, which I don't know if that's true, but as far as my testing has gone, if you don't have the ability to unload the air coming off the prop disc, if it's blocked in any way, it kind of dulls the feeling and sensation and inputs that you give it. So if you have like a low rider frame, you want to go with a 2306 and you want to go with the AOK Fly 2306. For all else, you want to go with the 2207 because you do have better high high RPM control. And that's what I feel between the, these two motors. On the same frame, same build, everything else is the same. I feel like the 2207 has a little bit more high-end control. Now, if you compare these to the Sumax motor, the Sumax motor is basically the brother hobby motor, except for the fact that they decided to use magnets that are about 0.2 millimeters thicker. Sumax is a company that used to be a Brother Hobby OEM manufacturer. So they, they actually used to make Brother Hobby motors, but they don't do that anymore. And they kind of just stole their design, serves Brother Hobby right, and designed their own motor, which I have, again, no idea why they made the magnets thicker. I told them about that. This thicker magnets and the heavier bell, and they just changed it a little bit. It's enough to make the motor just feel dull in the air, and it just doesn't feel as good in the air. So if I was to choose between the AOK Fly, the Sumax, and the Brother Hobby, the BBB motor, I would go with one of these two, not the Sumax motor, just because of that real kind of light, dull sensation when, when I um, give it stick inputs on this motor, regardless of the frame or anything that it's on. You'd be hard-pressed to tell the difference between the ZMX and the Brother Hobby motor compared to these two motors. So, you know, $15 and $14 motors are comparable to super high-end motors, although the super high-end motors might be more durable, slightly. That being said, you will probably smash the motor before you just, you know, bend the shaft or just nick all the parts of it and <laughs> make it, like, nasty to the point that you want to change it. You'll probably smash the motor before. So then you argue, well, should I just save the money and go with one of these two motors which perform pretty much the same, or should I go for the highest end motor and get what I want? Uh, one thing I do want to say about the BBB motor is that it is exceptionally smooth. It has the least vibrations of any motor that I've tested. More, the ZMX and the, brother, and the BBB motor are very, very similar in smoothness, especially at high RPM. This motor, it's like, it's like silk. It sounds like silk. Okay, now those things aside, let's look at this. This is the core frame from FURC and Underground FPV. And these are the, um, this is a 32-bit 4-in-1 Kamikaze Pro, whatever, board. It's a 6S, 32-bit, 4-in-1 ESC from Underground FPV. It's freaking awesome. And I'm planning on putting it in this frame along with this, this uh, flight controller that they've made, which is uh, arguably one of my, my preferred flight controllers if you're using independent ESCs because it just houses everything really it stacks everything really really nicely in there and it has this IMU box which has like um, a very delicately um, calibrated silicone like mesh pad thing in there which IMU sits on so you don't have to soft mount anything and I appreciate that because it's very good it has a um, an OSD and yeah that's that so let's let's look at this frame this is the kind of the real discussion I wanted to have this frame is a frame that I've been looking at for a while, and this is the first time I've actually held one in my hand. This is the version one. The version two has, as far as I know, independent arms, or maybe it's a version, I, I don't, I'm not really sure which version it is, but it seems like the previous one because it's using, it has a, um, a camera mounted, uh, uh, the FPV camera mount adapter for a standard camera. It doesn't have a micro camera adapter. 
So I'm assuming it's version one. So let's look at the construction of this frame. It's it's a monobody. It's a monobody. It's ultra, super, duper rigid. This frame was designed entirely like for aerodynamics. It was not designed for anything really but aerodynamics and performance. So this is like the first true super performance frame that we've seen. And um, I'm going to be building it and testing that. I am not a fan of the construction of this frame. And I think that with the resources that they use to build this frame, th this is a very expensive frame to make. Very, very, very expensive frame to make, to, to manufacture. The tooling is very expensive. And the each frame, making each frame is very expensive. That's why it has such a high sale point. This is the undermount like brace, which is what kind of holds your ESCs in. And it has these holes in there that um, let the air, air flow into the ESCs, which is really nice. And the air flows into these, these uh, ripples in the side, which are actually designed to um, maintain. If you've seen kind of like a speed plane, speed RC plane props, they have these jagged tooth edges on the, on the trailing edge of the prop to prevent the, the air from delaminating because they have such crazy steep pitch on the prop. And same scenario here. They're Hey, what are all these holes? These are speed holes to make the car go faster. Oh yeah, speed holes. In order to put this piece on the frame, you have to use the same screws that you would use to mount, mount your flight controller and, and everything inside there. But how do you mount all your stuff in there and then put this thing, like how, like how, how are you, like, like there's, like, how are you supposed to build this darn thing? It's going to be such a pain to work on because they did this. I mean, they could have just rotated it 45 degrees. It's a circle in there. And it would have been so much easier to, to build because you could take this brace off, you know, access your four screws for your flight controller, and then build it however way you like, and then put this brace on. Hey, you know, look, done. But now, in order to make this work, you're going to have to use, like, one of those little um, the, the, the nylon standoffs. You're going to have to screw this on into the nylon standoffs and they're gonna to have to have screws going down into your stack, the battery position on an X-frame, especially a very tight X-frame like this, the battery needs to sit pretty far forward and it's going to protrude out from underneath this straight edge. And that's just gonna mess with the airflow. It's gonna mess with the aerodynamics. If you put the battery directly under the frame, when you're at a tilt, when you're at an angle, especially with with these arms that are so thick like this, the motors are raised far above the battery. And when you're at a tilt, the battery is all the way back here and your CG is like back here. It's not up here where it needs to be for, you know, proper balance and control. So when it's back here, the rear motors are spending all of their power, taking, spending more power just to keep the back of the frame up before they start moving forward. My gripes about the frame, but it is a super duper sexy frame. It is so slick. It's way slicker and smaller than I expected. And I'm really interested in building it and, and seeing how it performs. I am going to put this 4-in-1 stack in there somehow, and I'm going to wire it up, and I'm going to find some really big beefy motors. I was going to make this an 8S build to see if I could break 170 miles per hour because of the aerodynamics, but it does weigh 90 grams. And... After kind of looking at the frame, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this like big beefy motors, probably 2307 or 2407 motors, and I'm going to test it on 6S. This is the 6S ESE. I'm going to test it on 6S, and it re the, the base structure of the frame is super duper aerodynamic. So they have created, a, and you can put, you'll probably be able to put 10S on it with the new S, the 4 one ESE that they're making, and on 10S and super aerodynamic even if the frame weighs like 15 20 grams more than i want it to weigh you're probably going to get pretty darn close if not way past 200 miles per hour so interesting interesting discussion this was a very long video i hope you found it interesting please don't forget to floss and bye bye